Thank you, Dr. Moore. Good, uh, good evening. I think it's still the evening, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Jeff as a party and I am your police chief. And I do want to say that I have two of our school liaison officers that have been sitting with me since six o'clock. Uh, oh. Officer Tom Lopez and Officer Jason Smith. So if you, uh, if you end up having a question for them, uh, they'll be able to answer it for you as well. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be part of this study session. I'll be speaking to a majority of the slides and I will of course be available to answer any questions that you might have. I'm here tonight because I feel very strongly about the school liaison officer positions with their uh, respect to the collaboration with our students and our school district. Before I start, I just wanna quickly differentiate between a school resource officer and a school liaison officer. Generally, a school resource officer is assigned to one school, which is typically a high school, and he or she spends their entire day at that school and often has their own office. We call our school liaison officers, there's two of them, because they're spread throughout um, the uh, district and they attend all uh, levels of the schools to include the grammar schools, the middle schools, and the high schools. They are also involved with our private schools in town as well. On the first slide, um, as you see, the, the, we do allocate two SLOs who are part of the, the community relations department. We have four people in that department, uh, the community policing officer, the community relations sergeant, and, and these two individuals. Uh, as far as we can tell, the school liaison program has been involved since uh, uh, approximately the mid 1980s. Um, our SLOs go through a, a, a serious kind of selection process to become school officers. It, it's a position that, that people uh, often want. Um, I'll get into a little bit of the numbers later. It's because we have a lot of people that uh, currently work here at the PD that were um, students or that attended South City High Schools. And uh, the process is, is pretty intense. We go through their personal files, we go through their evaluations, uh, go through their application, their resume, we interview their supervisors, and then we have a staff conversation. And after an interview, we, we pick the person. I'd say generally that we have between uh, three and four people that put in for our, our school liaison position. They're two year rotation uh, and they're offset by a year. So we always have one officer who has some experience in the position when the other officer's leaving. Um, both of our current uh, school liaison officers are products of our South San Francisco schools. And I just wanted to point out, it might be on the PowerPoint someplace, but 42 of our current 118 employees attended South San Francisco schools, which is a third of our department. And of those 42 people, 28 are people of color. So it's obviously been a very uh, productive way for us to not only get employees that uh, learn and, and lived in South San Francisco, but also um, people of color. If you can change the slide for me, please. Okay, these are some of the programs that are within, uh, that we teach within the school district. Uh, we used to teach great classes. Now we have a new uh, curriculum that, that, that we're working with called YES, which is the Youth Enrichment Series. Um, we obviously have a collaboration with the police department and the fire department with the Every 15 Minutes program that we teach every year to either uh, the juniors and seniors at El Camino or, or South San Francisco High School. We teach rights and responsibilities classes, and we participate in, in Read Across America. Um, uh, we do some presentations, most of which are uh, at the request of the school district, um, presenting to parents on bullying, social media, and overall safety. Um, I want to note that we do zero proactive enforcement on campus. It is all the request of the schools. We don't patrol campus. We patrol around campus and the streets that lead to campus and the adjoining streets before or after school. And that is also often requested by the schools. We don't search students or their lockers unless it is directed by school staff. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is just a breakdown of some of the hours um, that we spend at different schools. Uh, in 2018 and 19, as you'll see, uh, we, we reported that we spent about 200 hours at the schools in the district um, and interacted with roughly 2,000 students. 
Uh, we get our, our, our data from our RIMS, uh, which is our computer system. Um, what it does not uh, count is just the time that the school liaison officers will just get out, go to different schools, show up at a recess, play with the kids, uh, visit the different schools that they're responsible for that day. Um, they don't necessarily put themselves out on the computer. Um, they're just at the different schools, so that wouldn't be tracked. But that's the majority of their days is, is really just spending time going from school to school. And uh, our numbers, like I said, don't, don't always show those type of visits. Next slide. So as you know, the South San Francisco Police Department pays 100% of the associated cost to this program. Um, so in the last, as we estimated, 35,000, uh, 35 uh, years, um, as of this year, it was about $480,000 in salaries and ben benefits with about 240,000 per officer. Um, we also buy and, and pay for our own supplies and services. Um, the every 15 minutes program costs between um, 16 to $18,000. That's paid for by the police department, by the city. And the, the 480,000 number is actually higher because our community um, policing officer also, she uh, spends a lot of time on the every 15 minutes program. She also helps teach some of our classes. So it's almost 2.5 people that we have um, assigned to this uh, program, to these programs. Next slide, please. Uh, response times, uh, th these are some of the questions that were asked of me. The response time, the calls, it's very dependent on the nature of the call. Um, our school, li school liaison officers share their cell phones with the school admi administration. They oftentimes just call them directly. They don't have to even call our non-emergency number. They can just call the cell phone of our school liaison officers. And, and if they are tied up on a, on a call at a different school, they respond themselves. The goal really is, is to keep our day shift patrol officers out of the schools. Uh, most times we have five or six officers for the entire city. We have 100,000 people uh, in town with, our, with our, our, our employees that are coming into work in town, and uh, we need those officers out there. But um, when the school liaison officers get tied up from calls from the schools, oftentimes we have to use our day shift patrol as well. Um, as far as the, the quickest response, obviously, would be to call 911, and we, and we tell everyone that. Please don't call a school liaison director uh, directly, um, um, because if it's something that is that is of, a, of an emergency, we want you to call nine one one so that everyone knows what's going on. We can get there as soon as we can. Uh, I think what makes the relationship work the best is just the collaboration that we have uh, with the school district and with the, uh, the the educators at the schools. Next slide, please. A uh, number of times officers were called to schools. Uh, this is also through the same database search, March 1st of 2019 through March 1st of 200, 2020, we were called for uh, 350 times for calls for service at all the schools combined. Um, I talked earlier about roughly 2000 kids that we come into contact a year. Um, and uh, I was listening to a lot of the, the, the students and, and uh, teachers and citizens that were calling in and, and it made it sound like we are what constantly taking people out of your campuses uh, in handcuffs. Uh, what I found interesting when we looked at the numbers is, is, is last year in 2019, we took two people out of, of the school in handcuffs. All the other calls that we were there, the over 350 times, over 2000 students that we contacted, um, two people were taken out in handcuff, handcuffs one of which was for an assault with a, with a weapon that was similar to a brass knuckle. And the other student was someone who was threatening staff, threatening teachers, and ultimately assaulted the uh, school liaison officer that arrived. In the last five years, this was a stat we were asked to get. In the last five years, we have arrested 18 people on South San Francisco campuses in five years. Uh, 17 were students and one of them was a teacher. Um, we also um, contact thousands of students like we talk about a year. So if we're talking 2,000 students, we're actually arresting less, arresting, physically taking out of handcuffs less than three a year. Um, 
And I was, as I was going over these numbers, it brought me back um, to a quick little story based on this time that, that I want to tell you. Of 1998, I was a school liaison officer here from 1998 until 2000. And at the time, uh, things were a little bit different. Uh, the requests from the schools were a little different. And uh, it's funny how we've come this full circle because I remember being pretty new in school liaison and meeting with my sergeant and the other school liaison office officer in South City High School with the then principal and assistant principals because they were upset because I did not want to take someone um, out of school in handcuffs. I didn't feel like it fit in this particular situation. But not only did they demand that everyone leave school in handcuffs, but that we wait for the lunch bell or the recess bell to go off so that everybody in the school would see us take these people out in handcuffs as a deterrent. And we had that argument. Uh, we ended up making some changes to the school handbook. And uh, it's just in interesting now in 2020, uh, it it's kind of come full circle. So uh, it has never been the intent of the police department to um, have this program be where anybody was in fear of us. Um, if it's gotten to that, that's, uh, that's a shame. Um, I know that we didn't do anything uh, intentionally to try to get it to that. But um, our, our whole uh, kind of mission has always been to find any way we can to build relationship with, with the youngsters. And uh, this has been a, a good way based solely on the fact of how many people we've been able to, uh, to hire, keep in our community and work for the city. Uh, next slide, please. Just a, a few more facts from the database a search about uh, times that we uh, respond to the schools, provide services, um, general visits. Uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's done on a daily basis. That's their sole responsibility is the schools and our um, Explorer program, which is also made up of mostly uh, kids 15 to 21 years old that went to schools in South San Francisco. Next slide. Uh, some of the, of the other issues, uh, other issues, excuse me, some of the other things that we provide are, are security services. We provide security services, athletic events, dances, proms, um, ballets, etc. cetera. Um, these activities are charged, excuse me, charged at an hourly rate. And it's um, the only reason we, these are the only time that we do charge the schools. And the reason we do charge is because we are paying officers overtime to have to do this. So we try to offset our, um, our calls at least a little bit. Uh, these type of security arrangements are uh, consistent with all public and private schools throughout the state, especially at nighttime events, football games, dances, quad basketball games. You'll see this up and down the state uh, where you have um, officers at a pay job for these, for these schools. Um, our focus uh, is for the students to enjoy the event that they're at without the concern for any, cr for any criminal assaults, any bad behavior, we also continue to try to build relationships through the through these events. Um, just want to also mention the school district pays a discounted rate for this as well, and that we charge our generally our general community when they're having dances or private events for security about twenty five dollars more than what we charge uh, the school district. Next, next slide, please. Um, benefits. Uh, there's a lot of things that we feel that are benefits that we provide. Uh, and once again, these are all times that we are called by the school district. SLOs often act as mediators, counselors. Um, uh, enforcing the law is a last result. We would love it if the school is able to use their own um, form of, of, of discipline, consequence, uh, education, learning, whatever way that you want. We go and you call us. We don't go to the schools looking for anything. We try to help you when you need help, uh, when you ask for help, which is often. And uh, we try to take advantage of being able to uh, of being able to help when we can. But the last thing we want to do, and, and the numbers show that with two last year and three a year for the last five years, are take uh, youngsters out of that out of those schools in handcuffs. Um, and then the, a point I mentioned earlier is when the school liaison officers are unavailable is when on duty uh, patrol personnel respond to the calls for service, and we also provide training to them on uh, the same type of uh, uh, goal that we have, which is to really not, uh, not bring anyone out of, handcuff out, of the, out of that school in handcuffs if we don't have to. Um, last slide. 
I believe it's the last slide it is. Uh, the benefits um, to the school continued the relationships, positive interaction. I know we've, we've been doing this for 35 years and um, this is the first time that I've had to speak to anyone within the school board about this. Um, it, it's an interesting time. I completely understand it. It's a sad time, but um, to, to have to justify uh, this, uh, us, is this the first time for us? It's the first time for me. Um, I cannot count how many times that uh, Dr. Moore and I have spoke on the phone at night and on weekends regarding traffic issues, regarding uh, threats of an active shooter uh, made to certain campuses. What I then do, regardless of the date, time, I then call our community relations division and let the four of them know that we need to formulate a plan for the following day so these students will be safe. That includes their, their entire unit, that includes our detectives, that includes our motors and our day shift patrol officers. If we don't have SLOs, the school district will not get the same level of service as we simply will not have the ability to do so. Please know, if you, please know um, that things will be different. Besides all the time spent teaching and learning with the students, we will not be able to provide traffic control at your schools. We will not be able to watch crosswalks and stop signs at Sunshine Gardens. We will not be able to deal with the double parking complaints from, that we received from the school at Bury Bury. We will not be able to assist with the safety patrol at Martin School. I could really go on all night, unfortunately, of, of what we will not be able to do for the school district if a decision is made that you no longer want us on your campuses. I want to highlight in the last 35 years and my 28 years with the city, we never received notice from the superintendent or school board about not wanting our services. Maybe this is because the school district doesn't pay anything for our services. Maybe this is because we have always had open communication and squashed any disagreements we have ever had. Maybe it's because Superintendent Moore has 24 seven access to me and my department. Or maybe it's because the program works for the South San Francisco School District, works for the South San Francisco Police Department, and most importantly works for the students that attend our schools. I know that I am biased and that I am passionate about my belief in this program. But my ultimate responsibility as the police chief is to protect and serve the residents of this city. That absolutely includes the students who attend your schools. Removing the SLOs from our district based on problems that are occurring across the country, but not in my opinion in South San Francisco is an overreaction. Please do your part and help me keep our students safe. I'm willing to answer any questions you guys might have. Thank you for your time.